There we go. Recording in progress. I'm going to turn it over to Minnesota's state rapid response team. This is the second part of our two part webinar series. Uh, the recording for part one where they talked about layoff assistance. I should say layoff aversion assistance is posted on careerforcemn.com under layoff resources. And I can email that out to all of you um, in the coming days, along with the recording for this. Please share this webinar with anyone in HR, in businesses throughout the state of Minnesota, so that people are informed um, some options for if they do find that they may need to lay off or they don't want to and they want to try some new tactics. The state rapid response team is fantastic to help all businesses. So glad to have you. I'm now going to introduce the the rapid response team supervisor, supervisor Jason Waddell. Good morning, Jason. Good morning, Liz. Thank you so much again for setting up this two part series for rapid response to provide information not only on layoff aversion and retention, but also how we're going to assist uh, not only the employers, but also employees when they have to look at the uh, potential of uh, either conducting a, a layoff uh, or a business closure. Um, I want to uh, call attention to uh, my teammate, uh, Marla Beatty. Uh, she'll be uh, presenting the majority of this material uh, and I will be filling in. So again, my name is Jay Sodell. I've been with the State Rapid Response Team and with DEED for 10 years. Uh, prior to that, uh, I was uh, full time in the military. Marla. Thanks, Jason. Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining us. I'm Marla Beatty. I'm also on the rapid response team for I don't I always forget how long it's, it's just been a whirlwind since the beginning, but I want to say around eight years. Um, but I've been with the state for going on 15 years. And so prior to my rapid response um, duties, I was a business services representative. Uh, so I, I love the business aspect of the layoff aversion um, efforts that we have going, and so we're really excited to share this information with you. Um, I'm also the TAA liaison, which is a program um, that helps workers when they're trade impacted through a layoff or closure. Um, that, that program is on a hiatus, but we will mention it today as well. Um, so today we're really going to focus on the employer handbook, which is what we would bring with us when we meet with you as an employer to talk about some of the things that rapid response can do for you. So I'm going to kind of just turn it back over to Jason and he can kick it off. Oh, you're muted, Jason. How many years of this, right? Uh, so as I'm looking, as I'm looking through uh, the participants, uh, I do see that we do have. Um, uh, Liz McClune, who's also part of our team, and John Mose, uh, they have joined us as well. So if they want to pop on camera and introduce themselves, uh, our state rap response team currently consists of uh, six individuals who work throughout the state uh, on business closures and layoffs and with employers and employees. So uh, Liz, John, do you want to introduce yourselves and let everybody know how long you've been with the team? Thanks, Jason. Uh, good morning, everyone. I'm Liz McClune. I am a senior specialist on the rapid response team and also the labor liaison. So when there is a um, negotiated contract in, and a union in place, I would coordinate with the union in addition to the employer so that we together can best make sure that the needs of the workers are being met and the union offers oftentimes um, gives additional information uh, to us regarding the layoff, like the um, the feeling behind kind of like um, just the feeling behind the workers and and what that picture looks like and any um, any benefits being negotiated uh, through effects bargaining uh, for the separation of those folks. So those two things are very important when we look at the whole scope of a layoff. And I've been on the team uh, nine years in February. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you, Liz. John. Yes, I uh, welcome. Um, my name is John Moles and I've been on 
uh, the state rep response team for just over five years. Um, I come from a background in, <clears throat> excuse me, unemployment insurance, where I generally worked with special programs, and that would include TRA, which is affiliated with TA. That's the extension of unemployment benefits, um, the shared work program, um, unemployment insurance related to disaster unemployment, um, as well as just general uh, unemployment insurance information. And I was with unemployment for quite a few years, um, you know, decades actually, before I was uh, fortunate enough to get on the team with Jason and the rest of my colleagues. Excellent, thank you, John. Uh, <clears throat> uh, we also have two other uh, members, uh, Mi Yang, as well as uh, Lolita Davis Carter, who are also part of our team uh, that weren't able to attend today. So uh, with that, I'm gonna pop off camera uh, as we start this presentation so you don't focus on me and you focus on the material. Uh, so uh, if you look on your screen now, you'll see that we have the employer handbook pulled up. Uh, this is our predominant uh, handbook that we have created. It was created back in 2015, 2016 during the mining layoffs uh, up in uh, Northeast Minnesota. Uh, prior to that, we used to stuff blue folders with about you know, 15 to 20 pages of information and it just, it wasn't working out. So we came up with a, a handbook uh, to provide information uh, as we're going out and we're speaking with employers uh, who are currently, uh, or, or we're, we're currently looking at uh, conducting a, a mass layoff or a business closure. Uh, so if our team is contacting you, this again, Marla pointed out, this is the handbook that we will, we will be bringing out uh, with us. Uh, the first page that we're gonna go to here is getting help in hard times. Uh, as it says, many workers who lose a job through no fault of their own may need some assistance or help uh, returning to work. Uh, this getting to getting help in hard times not only applies to the employees, but it also applies to the employer. Uh, our team is um, proactive in that we want to reach out and talk with that employer, maybe figure out strategies to avert that layoff. Uh, and if we're unable to do that, um, we're going to come in and we're going to talk to that employer about the assistance and the programs that um, the state does offer. Uh, so if you go down about uh, what uh, three quarters of the way down, it says individuals may be eligible for this program if they're laid off through no fault of their own, eligible for unemployment insurance, and like, uh, unlikely to return to their previous occupation or industry. So uh, this is our table of contents page. Um, it does again include all of the rapid response information that we're going to go through with that employer. So it's our processes, our procedures, um, as well as it also incorporates what we call our mass layoff handbook. So it has all the information that we're going to provide to uh, those workers um, if we're allowed to come into that, uh, that business and do what we call a group information session. I'll turn it over to Marla. Thanks, Jason. Um, so, yeah, the first part of the webinar that we did was a layoff aversion strategies. Um, and so, you know, unfortunately, when, by the time we get called in, we don't have the, the, the employers already made that decision. Right. And so our first meeting when we when we um, schedule this is basically we're going to talk about why are you laying off? What's the current situation? And if there's any possibility to avert this layoff. Um, we always keep it confidential if it's not public knowledge, because oftentimes we'll get involved before the employees are aware that there's going to be a closure or a layoff that happens. Um, and so uh, if if we know that the the layoff is inevitable, we can't prevent it, it's, it's going to happen, then we move into our goal really is to um, get information on the dislocated worker program and several other resources actually um, to the workers. And we do that in the process of a group information session. Um, so we will work with the employer and educate them on what this process is and um, how we ultimately get the services to the workers. And so in doing that, um, our obviously our first goal is to set up those group info sessions. And, and in those info sessions, we're gonna talk about the dislocated worker program and unemployment insurance. So when Jason was introducing um, our team, you can kind of notice that all of us 
really have some area of expertise that we brought into the team when um, when we joined. And so John had mentioned he was the, the UI guru on the team. Um, we usually will invite somebody from the unemployment insurance division to talk about unemployment insurance in these group info sessions, when to apply, how to apply, and what to expect. And then we'll also talk about the dislocated worker program. And, is, and also in part of of their handbook that they have, there's going to be information on um, Minsure and lots of other helpful resources that we know are going to be a benefit to somebody when they lose their job. So the, the main thing that we're going to talk about today is the dislocated worker program um, and how how that all happens in collaboration with at the employer. Um, so when we go in, we talk about the program and it and do the presentation to the workers. And um, we talk about how the there's four main categories. The first category is career planning and counseling, where we'll pair the, the workers up with a, a employer job coach and or an employee job coach, and they're going to help them make a plan on what to do, because that's everybody's first question. Great, what am I going to do now? So they'll have uh, somebody work side by side with them in um, creating a plan on what's next. The second category, obviously, is job search assistance. That's part of that plan. So there's workshops um, that can help them with cover letters, resumes, interviewing skills, networking, all kinds of assistance and helping them when they want to look for a job. Um, and as they're looking for a job or when they're creating that career plan, they may also realize that, geez, they need further education. And that leads into that third category of training. The Dislocated Worker Program can um, pay for their, their training to get a new certification or finish that degree or um, whatever it is that they might need that's going to help them be more viable in the workplace. And then the fourth category is support services. There's limited funding available to employees um, when they they have a crisis situation, like their car breaks down or they're having trouble with childcare. Um, so that that also is in there. And a lot of employers have, um, I shouldn't say a lot, but the, a lot of the bigger employers will have um, some services that they hire through an outplacement provider. And um, a lot of times that, that barrier will be there. Well, they'll say, oh, well, we already work with such and such company and they provide these services. Um, the thing that outplacement providers don't provide that the dislocated worker program does is really that training and support services aspect. And so oftentimes we'll work hand in hand with that outplacement um, provider that the company has hired with our free services. And it really works beautifully with the two programs together. Um, so after we go in and we, we talk about this program, the question is really how do we access this program? In the state of Minnesota, we have two streams of funding. The first stream of funding we call, it's our small layout, it's for our small layouts, our formula funding. And that goes out to all of our service providers across the state. Um, and we, you'll see at the end that we have a map of where all the career force locations are. And we also have independent service providers. That goes out to all of them to um, assist workers when they say just walk into the office and say they need help finding a new job. Um, it's, it's designed to assist in those small layoffs. Uh, when we have a mass layoff, which is when rapid response gets involved, we have at least 50 people who are interested in the program or want to or need some assistance. Um, we don't want all 50 of those workers walking into their local career force location and needing some training because they're going to run out of money real quick if that happens. So in order to ensure that they get the level of service that they need uh, and there's adequate funding available, that leads into our second stream of funding, which we call our project funding. So when we have um, at least 50 people who are interested in the program, that moves into our project funding process. And um, that's where, what you'll see a little bit later on here, we ask them to complete a survey and we form a planning and selection committee um, for people who are interested in representing their coworkers. Um, and we'll choose, well, it could be you know seven to ten people or five to seven people, whatever the interest level is and whatever the representation needs to be for that workforce. We'll pull them together and they'll have two meetings. Um, initially, they're going to uh, review what the needs are for their with their coworkers, uh, and we we learn this information through the survey that we conduct during that group info session. Um, and they will get together and they will. Um, develop what we call an RFI, which is a basically a request for information to the service providers. Service providers will um, then 
reply with a proposal on how they're going to serve that workforce. And that planning and selection committee will actually interview the service provider and uh, make a selection on who they want to uh, serve their coworkers and themselves. And that then there's a project grant that's, uh, that's provided to that service provider to provide that one-on-one -on -one, uh, type service delivery of the dislocated worker program to those impacted workers. And that way everybody gets, um, gets the service that they need without having to compete with um, everybody else in the area who potentially could be laid off in their community. Um, Thanks, Marla. I'm going to, I'm going to, yeah, jump in, Jason. And, and, and see if anybody has any, any kind of questions that they have about this process up to this point. I know that we don't haven't seen any come in for chat, um, but does anybody have any, any questions that they have about our process for mass layoff by this? So basically, when we get in on those group info sessions, that's a very brief version of what we cover that we provide to the employees. We talk about the dislocated worker program, and then we talk about that project funding process. Um, and so it, it it can get confusing because if they if if rapid response doesn't come in and talk about this, a lot of people are like, where do I where do I get services and how do I get some assistance? So. Um, we like to develop the project grant so that there's a service provider in place that can actually do outreach. Um, sometimes they'll bring in, if the employer is willing, they'll bring in people that will help with enrollment in the program that can provide further information on Minsure um, or even just even resume workshops and, and um, job fairs, recruiting events that happen on site at the company. So these are all the things that can happen when there's a project grant in place. So yeah, does anybody wanna, have any? Yeah, I want to, I just want to point out the do I qualify portion. Uh, a lot of times when we're talking with individuals, employers, uh, employees um, about our process, you know, they want to know how do I qualify? You know, do I qualify? How do I qualify? So any type of business uh, has informed the state rapid response team either via a warn or they've just reached out email or telephone call. And we've made the determination that a layoff or a mass layoff is taking place. Uh, and we have information, maybe it's from the newspaper. Maybe the newspaper uh, printed out that, you know, XYZ business is closing and it's going to affect 150 individuals. Um, at that point, we're making that determination on those individuals who were affected uh, by that layoff or closure. They do qualify for the dislocated worker program. Um, and a lot of times we get those those calls. Uh, I see Liz has raised her hand. Liz, go ahead. Thanks, Jason. Um, would you like for us to share the percentages of how often we hear from the media versus the employer? Yeah, that'd be great. OK, um, I just did a two year study of all of our layoffs that we worked on, small and large, and 66 percent of them came from the media. And I think it was 16 percent came from the employer and those were through warrants or um, just like a call from the employer that does not include an employee it has to be from like the hr division for it to be uh categorized as a, an employer we also have another section that employees um will reach out to us or unions or um our uh, partners in the community so that makes up the rest of the percentage thank you that's, that's great information you know we do rely on our media we rely on our partners a lot of times to provide that information on uh, layoffs and closures that are happening throughout the state of Minnesota. Um, we don't want to be the big scary state monster uh, for businesses. We're here to help. We're here to help not only the business, but we're also there to, to help the employees. And, and I'll probably reiterate that uh, again at the end of this, that you know we're really uh, passionate about the work we do and about the program that we've set up to assist. Marla. Yeah, thank you. And, and Liz, thanks for that, because that really gets to the heart of why we're doing these webinars. Um, we want more information out into the business community so employers know that they can contact us and we provide a really great service. It alleviates the stress on the HR manager um, and the employees. You know, it, it just it's people feel um, 
a lot less stress when they know that there's a wraparound service for people when they go through a, a layoff, whether it's the employer or the employees. And so Liz had uh, mentioned that when we have a warn um, notification that kicks off the rapid response process. So we, when we do that employer meeting, we will also discuss um, whether or not the employer is going to provide a warn letter. And we can give samples. Um, we can um, provide information on the laws and requirements and if they, they fit within those categories. And we talked about that a lot in that first webinar. So I won't go into a lot of detail on the warn letter, but in your handbook that we provide to you, uh, it does have a sample warn letter that you um, can use to um, notify both our commissioner and your local representatives there and Jason is part of the uh, he's the rapid response coordinator so he also receives directly these warn letters and it just provides the example of the information that you should have on on that warn notification when you give it to us um, and so it, it this is also just a snapshot of what our rapid response process is once we receive that notification and we start our services it starts out with those group info sessions um, and then it moves into that planning and selection committee meetings where we have um, the impacted workers choose a service provider. And after that, we kind of hand it off to that service provider and they will work one on one with the employees and rapid response steps back and, and just kind of turns it over. Um, we're always available if needed, but the service providers are exceptional in, in what they can do. And we it, I don't even know in the. I, Liz, you said nine years we've been here. Liz and I started at the same time. I'm not sure. I think maybe twice in my nine years have I ever been called back in after we've handed off the project for services. So they're they're very good. Um, also, the employer will receive um, assistance in how to notify their workforce. Uh, so we'll pull together uh, a, a meeting invite for all of their workers, and the invite just helps them um, kind of identify what what the talking points are going to be and you know basically the meeting notice because the employers are kind of like well I don't know how to explain what's going to happen at these group info sessions and so we provide um, information meeting notices so that they can share that with their work workers and with COVID um, we have really moved to a lot of online meetings. Um, it used to always be on site. We'd come on site and meet and whether it's um, in meeting rooms or it, we've done it on production floors with people standing around and listening to us or, and we've done it, you know, 6 a.m. or midnight shifts or, you know, whatever, whatever your work environment is, we're going to be there and we're going to do it. And if if it's easier for everyone to hop online and attend through via Teams or WebEx or whatever it is, we can do that too. So, um, we can do on-site, in-person, or we've gotten pretty good at doing things virtually as well. During the group info session, oh, sorry, this is the employer layoff questionnaire. So during the employer meeting, we also will ask the employer to complete a layoff questionnaire. And this is where um, we get the basics of, of what's happening with that layoff and the, the reason for the layoff and how many people are being impacted. Um, what types of positions are being eliminated? Uh, is it union? If it's union and Liz hasn't already heard about it, I'll bring Liz in onto this layoff. And if there's a potential for a, a, a foreign trade impact, um, I'm usually involved and I see Sarah Sadles also online and I, I will um, open it up to her in a little bit here too as well to talk about the trade program. Um, but this this we also will share with our unemployment insurance division because it's asking also if there's a severance package and um, you know what kind of notice that they're going to get and so that is information that will impact their unemployment insurance benefits so it helps our unemployment insurance division be prepared for questions and for that layoff and claims that are going to be coming in. I wanted to uh, to if you want to go back one. Um, and, and, and open the floor to to Liz. Is there anything different that you do uh, when you're working with a, a union layoff with the with the employer layoff questionnaire? You know, if we don't have um, some coordination from the employer, we do ask the union to fill out the employer questionnaire. And that way we can still get the information um, to unemployment insurance. 
they have a really good idea of the picture of the situation. And so they oftentimes can uh, fill in that role for us. Thanks, Liz. Yes, that's been invaluable when we have a when we have an employer who, um, for whatever reason, there could be so many different reasons, whether it's their legal division doesn't want to talk to us or um, or that we just we can't find anybody that actually has information on the layoff. Um, a lot of times, if it is union, they, Liz is able to definitely reach out to the union representation and and find information. So that's been amazing. Um, I also had mentioned a few times that um, sometimes there are extra benefits for um, employees that are for a company that's being closed as a result of foreign trade impact. Um, and I also mentioned that that program's kind of on a hiatus. Sarah, do you want to say anything about the TAA program and where it's at right now? Sure. Thanks, Marla. Good afternoon, everyone. Great to be with you here today. Uh, so yes, the Trade Adjustment Assistance Program is, uh, it's called a phase termination. So it's not done. It's not over. We're continuing to serve people, uh, but we are not able to file petitions with U.S. Department, or I'm going to take that back. We are able to file petitions, but Department of Labor is not researching them. So uh, if Marla or the Rapid Response Team finds out that a layoff potentially has foreign competition involved, our staff would work closely with Rapid Response to research it. And if we suspect that, yes, there's foreign competition, we would file a petition with U.S. Department of Labor uh, when the program, trusting it is reauthorized. When it is reauthorized, then Department of Labor would do their investigation. If the petition is certified, then those workers have benefits available to them, which are really generous and terrific. Uh, and so, as I said, Department of Labor is not researching petitions at this time, but uh, they have instructed us very strongly conti to continue to outreach to people who have been determined eligible previously and have not used their training benefit. And so you may see outreach from our team. Uh, we're holding mo monthly virtual informational sessions for workers who maybe were laid off 10 or 12 years ago that was certified and they didn't use their benefit. So happy to answer any questions on that. We have general contact information uh, and we can continue the discussion about what is available uh, and what uh, potentially will be available in the future, trusting the program is reauthorized by Congress. Thanks, Marla. Thank you, Sarah. Um, yeah, it. we're all kind of crossing our fingers that it gets reauthorized and hopeful that it does. Um, and the TAA program, for those of you who maybe have never heard of it before, I always like to say it's the dislocated worker program on steroids. So it's just, it's just bigger, uh, more generous and a key component is it, those of you who maybe learned about the TAA program when the mining layoffs happened, it's really the key component is that it extends that unemployment insurance benefits while people go back to school. And so that's really, really valuable. So yeah, we're all hoping that it comes back. Um, but for now, if if there's any sort of foreign trade impact, we will still file the petitions um, awaiting uh, authorization. So thank you, Sarah. And this is just an example uh, in the employer handbook. It has an example of the TAA petition. Uh, when we do file, um, the biggest thing we need, other than obviously the, the impact of the foreign trade, but we also need to have two employer contacts. It's usually a manager and an HR person, um, but that's kind of key information that we need to have to file. And um, I had alluded to uh, before that on the back side of the handbook is um, a location of all of our career force areas uh, or our career force locations. Um, we have them all across the state. And so when we do have small layoffs, we encourage people to go to the career force site, enter in their zip code, and it will tell them where their nearest uh, career force location is. Um, if it's a project funding, which is, we always hope to, to try to achieve, it will be a service provider that will reach out directly to them uh, and help with enrollment and recruitment and educating them on what benefits are available to them. So we hope that um, when when you as an employer are, are working with rapid response, you have kind of that full wraparound of services to where um, we're going to help you as an employer um, to 
to provide services and um, information to your workers that are being impacted. And hopefully it makes the job of the HR person or manager, whoever's conducting this layoff, make it a little bit easier and guides them in, in the whole process. And then for the workers, we know that, that it, it provides them so much um, information that they feel really supported in going through the layoff. And, and as an employer, I'm sure that you all are aware that we have a huge labor shortage. Uh, and so people are able to get, get new jobs pretty quickly. Um, but we hope that they take the time to really look at what is available to them so that their next job uh, might be a, a really good match. Because a lot of people, they'll they'll take this opportunity to um, take advantage of some training and go, in, go into a new new field or new service that they always wanted to do and just never were able to to not do that. So I, at this point, I want to pause and um, open it up. Do we have any other questions from the floor? I'm not seeing any in our chat. Um, and, and while we're waiting for those questions, uh, thank you, Marla. You know, I kind of want to go back to our, our agenda um, when, we're, when we're talking about, you know, what do we do during our employer meeting, our employer face-to-face. -face. Uh, the one important piece of the agenda is, is engagement. Uh, we're always imploring our, our employers that we're working with you know, we, we want that engagement. Uh, the more that employer is engaged in this process uh, to assist those uh, employees that are being affected by either a layoff or a closure, the smoother this process goes, the more those folks uh, receive that information, they receive it quicker, and they're able to, uh, to, to transition. Uh, on top of that, uh, I also want to point out uh, to the employers on this call is that we do take into account uh, the business process and what's happening with that with that business. One of the again, one of the first things we ask is, what's the current situ situation? What are you doing currently? Uh, you know, what's happening from the point that we're talking to you until uh, either the layoff or the closure happens. And we understand that there's a business process in place that, in most cases, uh, that business is still conducting business up until that very last day. Uh, and we want to assure businesses, the employers, that we're not coming in, talking to the employees, and they are just jumping off uh, from the business and, and going out to other businesses. That, of course, is their, their prerogative as an employee to do that. But we do push for those employees to uh, work until the very last day when, when they are laid off uh, because there is that business process in place. Um, as well as if they look at maybe the potential of self-terminating. So they they quit the job uh, or maybe they, you know, they're they're upset about the layoff and something violent happens. You know, they they they're fired for cause. Um, those are disqualifiers. Uh, the individual will not qualify for the dislocated worker program at that point. So uh, we do work with the employer to ensure that those employees stay in their roles, continue to do their work up until the date of layoff or business closure. Thanks for pointing that out, Jason. Because yeah, we do, we always say that um, during these info sessions, if you quit or get fired, all of these great benefits then are not, you're not eligible for. So um, we have, we definitely have a goal of helping the employer retain the staff right up until the last, the last day. Does anybody else on the team want to add anything? I'm pretty notorious for for flying through presentations, so. <laughs> I think you covered it well, Marla. All right, thanks, John. Well, I will move to the end. And Liz, I can uh, turn it back to you to close. Liz Jennings. <laughs> right, right. Well, thank you, everyone. Um, everyone, the listeners, participants on the call, you can always uh, contact one of us. Um, Marla, why don't you go to the second slide? Um, contact Jason or Marla directly. 
jason.waddell at state.mn.us or marla.bd at state.mn.us or contact them through the DEED Minnesota, State of Minnesota website or Career Force MN. Um, as a last resort, the Career Force Information Assistance Line can also route your calls. So there are many ways to get a hold of us, and we encourage all employers to always reach out. Just know that all of your questions and concerns are treated very confidentially. So um, you don't have to worry about name getting out there until the time is right. Um, so I thank you. I thank everyone for being on the call. This recording will be posted and uh, please share with your HR groups, with your chambers of commerce groups, and the team is always um, available too to speak in person to any groups of people that may want to get this information. So have a good day, everyone. Thank you. Thank Bye, you, everybody. Liz. Thank you, everyone.